that is a strength. <laughs> Today I'll be sharing with you my experiences in the gym with this guy right here, Aaron Turner, a cycling specific strength and conditioning coach who also has a PhD in load management. In fact, a lot of his PhD studies were focused on a continental cycling team, but today he's focused on a regular bloke at the age of 41 that's just trying to get faster on the bike than ever before and in doing so he'll be pointing out a lot of things that i'm doing wrong in the gym while also providing the simple changes that i can make that will make me more powerful stronger and faster on the bike including a banded deadlift exercise that if implemented at the correct rpe you can see an increase in quad muscle activity ranging from approximately 30 to 50 percent so what am i looking to get out of the gym as a cycle well, firstly, I just want to improve my overall strength on the bike and also... Sprint repeatability. Yep. There's two ways you can go about it. Yep. We can increase repeatability at the power you're at, or we can increase your top end sprint power so you don't have to dip into it so often in a race. So if you can increase that, when you're cycling up to just over a thousand watts, you're not so close to your top end power, so that'll improve your repeatability as well. The sheer fact of getting stronger, because I want you to lift heavier. This is heavy for you, which is good. Yep. The lunges going a bit easy on yourself. So I want heavier single leg work for you. That'll increase total strength. And then for every watt of power you're producing, it's gonna cost less oxygen and less energy, which will improve your repeatability as well. So we're gonna get that benefit from the strength. I just want you to get stronger. More quadricep in this. Yep. You've got a lot of glute, but I wanna bring in some quad as well. Yep. Your lunges are good, they're yep. just too light. Okay. Gotta get them heavier. Oh, so keep the same technique. Well, we're gonna play, I'm gonna play a little yep. with it. I'll show you different variations and we'll see what you like, but. We need the weight to go up, yeah. reps to come down. The other thing is your order of your exercises. We need to front load it more with the, the important cycling stuff. And then the other qualities in the upper body, um, let's put them towards the end. Yeah, okay. Because okay? there's they're still important for you, but they're less important for the cycling stuff. Really good for bone mineral density in the upper body. And yeah. if you, heaven forbid, you crash uh, and you have to put your arm out, like we want you strong through here. Right. And we want those bones density less likely to have a major injury. But from performance, if we, if we put them at the start of your gym workout, it's going to increase fatigue. It's going to increase neural fatigue. So then when we get to important lower body stuff or important core stuff later in the session, you're not going to be able to give us enough out of that. Yeah, okay. And it's called the priority model. There's right. a lot of research on it. And it is, whatever you put at the start of your workout while your fatigue levels are low, yeah. that's where you're going to get your higher strength and muscle growth outcomes. I don't care which order you put them in. There's pros and cons to each, but they have to be close to the start. Upper body at the very back, yeah. and then any of your preferred core, we'll put in the middle. Look, your lunge technique's pretty good. So, and the fact we're changing this to be a bit more quad dominant. You don't, you don't recommend going straight to bed? Well, we were gonna tweak your deadlift technique <laughs> okay. a little bit. So even if you just do a couple of reps with a bit more knee flexion at the bottom of the movement, yeah. and then once you're happy with that, we can add the band. You look good in the lower body. Okay, this looks good here. Yeah. You're still a little cyclist, so this is just a little here. Right. I need to be here. Just a right. bit, just a bit more. Okay. Okay. So we can accommodate with that. I'm gonna get you to look up a little higher. I'm gonna think chest here. Beautiful can. From there. Give me three. Again. That's an improvement. And when you go back and look at the video, you'll yeah. see that first rep and you're like, oh, that was the golden rep. So anyone who's well trained and is thinking of trying this next demonstration that I'm doing at home, provide it's safe for you to do so. You would only bring the band in if you're lifting at least 80% of one repetition maximum in your lifts. If you're lifting less than that and you're well trained, it's not going to provide any additional benefit for strength development. But if you're untrained, probably just work on your technique. Don't worry about adding the band, in my opinion. Yeah. Cam, you're well trained. Okay. So we are going to get you to eventually to a point where the weight that you can lift the heaviest for seven reps yeah. that's ballpark 80 percent yeah you're going to add the band to that weight but you're going to drop back to four to five reps feed onto the band get your yeah. stance with that you're happy with no dead spots ha! no dead spots. <laughs> yeah. it's written all over his face i can feel the dead spots dying ah good ah. oh Different lift, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> wow. But I'd like some like deep knee band lunge patterns. And you've got a pretty deep one at the moment, We can, but we can get deeper. So your new walking lunge technique, we're gonna take you out of your kind of quad dominant style yep. to a style that has a bit more of a harmonious balance with glutes, a little bit of hamstring and a lot of quad in there okay. as well. So side on, it's gonna look like this. 
leaning forward. Yeah, so see this shin bone angle? Yeah. And then similar trunk angle? Yeah. That's gonna bring more glute in back on my on my lead leg. Whereas your other style was very like this. It was, upright. Okay, very quad dominant, which was fine, but we're gonna bring quad dominance via the leg press and your new technique on the deadlift. So now I can have a bit more of a balance in your lunge pattern. And it's gonna be a slightly more stable lunge variation. Yeah. And you should be able to get quite heavy on this one. So we need to find a weight that you feel you could get about seven lunges per leg on, but instead of doing seven on each leg with that weight, we're gonna do five to four each leg. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give you the strength impulse minus the soreness and high amounts of fatigue. I should add some further context here because Aaron's really focused on managing my soreness and my fatigue. And that's because I'm currently in a hit phase in my cycling training, meaning I'm doing roughly two to three hard sessions on the bike per week, meaning adding a lot more additional stress through the gym is not really what we wanna do. We just wanna be optimizing and maintaining strength during this particular phase. Now, of course, if I was in an off season or doing a lot of zone two base training, then this gym stuff would look a lot different, but that's a rabbit hole for another day. Still wanted to go back to my old school <laughs> Upright. That's it, looking forward for me as you do it. You as a cyclist. Yeah. Very tempting in these positions to do tailbone tuck. See my tailbone's tucked under me? Because that's what you guys are used to on the bike. For the safety of this lift, yeah. you have to be here. See I've flattened that out just a tad versus that. When you're doing it, it'd be a good idea to just practice in front of a, a mirror that you can be walking past. Make sure you get that the trunk the way I just demonstrated. Okay, okay because right. cyclists have that habit of going cycling mode. You could use this in replace of lunges okay. if you want to mix it up. If you're a real diehard, you can do both of them. I think you could you could alternate on this one. Because we've got the single leg leg press coming in later, we don't need to go doubling up on these single leg balance demanding ones. So you want, for your height, 45 centimeter to 18 inch box height. And it's because I want deep hip flexion from you and I want deep knee, knee flexion as well at the start of the movement. So deep knee bend, trying to resemble something at the top of a pedaling stroke. Yep. Uh, lean forward. Like I mentioned earlier, the back, you still have to avoid the curling of the back, okay? So the yep. back position needs to look good. And I drive up, back, drive. Four heavies using your 80% load, but I want you to do three to four sets per leg. So I, guess, yeah, I, push that. <laughs> I, made look, I made it look easy, didn't yeah. I? Bring the knee further forward. Okay, now lean your trunk forward slightly. That's your takeoff position. Oh, you felt that one. Oh. Now reset, give me that good position. I did do four hours this morning. <laughs> give me that good position again. So knee further forward, yep. Oh. As you master this, the goal is to get to a point where you don't feel like you're bobbing off the rear leg, where it feels lead leg dominant. But for now, we'll give you a free pass where you're just feeling it out. <laughs> oh. I do want to bring in the single leg leg press. Why? Think of it as like we're wringing out a wet cloth, yeah. okay? And so we're using the, the deadlift and your lunges yep. patterns or a couple of other variations I'll give you shortly. That's the meat and potatoes of the workout. But once we've done that, fatigue's kicking in and your ability to balance is gonna go down. Your motivation is potentially starting to take a dip. So if I bring in a machine exercise. Because the trunk doesn't need high stability on this. Because I'm in a reclined posture, relaxing on the bench. In terms of this chain, this is quite easy for me to control now because I can't fall over. So for the single leg leg press, you're gonna do a double leg warm up. I'm much happy with that, you're gonna lock out. Let's say I'm gonna use this leg. You make sure the safety stopper is higher than the non-involved knee. See how this is above my knee? Yep. That's my safe place. Right. Please adjust that if anyone's gonna use this. I'll demonstrate on this leg. I'm gonna line up my hip, knee, and ankle from my perspective in a fairly straight line. Right. So if you're peering over my shoulder, that'll look okay, in the ballpark. And now from here, I use my other leg just to help unrack, and away we go. So deep hip flexion, driving. To a point where you still have lower back contact and rear pelvis contact with the bench that you're sitting on. Okay. If you go so low you feel your pelvis slip out of the seat, you've gone way too deep. Okay. Okay, because now you're getting into lumbar flexion of the back. Beyond a level that would be de deemed safe. If you want a little bit more knee bend, you can go a little bit lower down the plate with your foot and take it down this way, that's gonna increase uh, ankle dorsiflexion and be a little bit more knee flexion. That's not always comfortable for everyone. Me personally, at my height, I just go mid plate. When you transition to the other leg, it's usually a good idea to lock out first, yep. re-line up your other leg, and away we go. At this point in your workout, just controlled okay. as best yep. you can. You can see we get nice deep ranges within your flexibility range, but we're still getting some really good strength output in the lower leg. 
based on a strategy of we want peak strength and your priority is peak strength in the lower body from a cycling performance perspective yeah yeah so we want you going to loads that are over 75 percent i've been ballparking about 80 percent weight and an 80 percent weight is one that you're probably going to be able to lift the weight for seven reps yep and, and it's, if seven's like the last rep you can do we're at 80 percent yeah but we don't want you lifting up to seven reps because there's going to be too much fatigue from that and your recovery time is going to be extended. It's going to affect the next day on the bike, definitely, and, yeah. and possibly even the day after that if we keep training like that. So yeah. what we, we need to do while we're at these higher loads for you because you're well-trained, we're going to come down. We're going to use that same seven rep maximum weight, but we're only going to do four to five reps of it. Oh, okay. okay? And then you're going to do three to four sets on each of those lower body exercises at that weight that I discussed. Yep. And if it's the deadlift, you're going to add the band yes. to it okay i want the variable resistance training on that one yeah. as well because huge strength improvements from that now let's talk about your rest periods this is peak strength training so you're probably going to want between two and three minutes rest minimum between sets okay, okay. before you feel ready to go i know you're used to the circuit style yeah but circuit style increases fatigue because you've got low rest okay so even if you're training antagonists or polar muscle groups like upper to lower body there's still fatigue going on so we're just going to take the rest period and then get the next set done okay once you've done your single leg variation, whether that's the lunge or the step up that I showed you, and you've done your deadlift, and then you go to your single leg leg press, you're then free to get circuit mode going, okay? You can circuit in your core, remaining core exercises yep. with your upper body and go blotto Thank on you. that, okay? okay? So that's the fun bit. Yep. Uh, but we get the, the priority stuff at the start of the session, okay. and that's where we're gonna get the bang for our buck with your cycling performance, because it's a lower body sport, yeah.